there were points in my when I was a teenager where I was I wanted to die. I didn't want to be on this earth anymore. Um, and I don't take that. I don't take this for granted. Kel Harrison, welcome to TNT Sports, but more importantly, welcome to the UFC. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Explain to me, because you have got a trophy cabinet bigger than most <laughs> franchises in the world of sports. <laughs> why the UFC and why now? Well, I think that the UFC is is the top of the top in MMA. You know, this is what I call kind of the Olympics of MMA. And um, anytime I go do something, I want to do it all the way, 100%. I want to be all in, go big or go home. When I first started MMA, the goal was always to, to be UFC champion. Now, the, the road has been winding and long, and there's been some ups and downs and some unexpected twists and turns, but we're here now. I truly believe that we're here at just the right time and just the right moment, and uh, everything is coming together really well for me. And as an opponent, mm -hmm. to make your debut against the yeah. person yeah. that everybody knows. Yeah. I mean, it couldn't have worked out better, could it? Especially on a card like what we're getting on no, Saturday. No, I mean, this is what I mean. Everything is working out really well for me. Like Holly Holm, UFC 300, biggest biggest card of that they've ever had. Um, I just think everything is, is coming together and I'm ready. I'm ready to shine. You just mentioned there when you stepped from the world of judo into the mm -hmm. world of MMA. Can you remember that first moment that maybe you stepped inside a cage or, or stepped onto a yes, mat and participated in the sport? Yes, I absolutely remember, yes. Well, I went to my first striking class a couple months after the 2016 games. Okay. I was like depressed. I had like post-Olympic depression. I didn't know what the hell I was gonna do, who I was gonna be. And I went to a striking class and I really liked it, so I kept going. And then about a month after I went to that class, I went to my first sparring session. And this like little 115 pound nugget like front kicked me and like boom, like kind of blasted me. And I was like, what the hell just happened? And that was it, I was hooked. I was like, okay, I wanna try, I give, wanna do it. Give me a piece of that is, yeah, is, is basically, what your attitude was I was at. like, I must be sick in the head, but yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> you, you just spoke there about, you touched upon depression there off the back of the 2060 yeah. Olympics. Was that yeah. because You'd done two back-to-back, -back, two gold yeah. medalists, and you were wondering where the next challenge was going to come from? Yeah. I mean, listen, I'm a, I'm a type A. I think that in order to be the best, in order to be an Olympic champion, you have to be super obsessed and super focused. Mm. And um, I really didn't know who the hell I was if I wasn't Jay Harrison, the, the judo player. And so I spent a lot, uh, those few months, like... <clears throat> not having a purpose, not having a drive, not having any idea. Um, but luckily for me, MMA was a, a great opportunity and a great path. And now I'm just, I'm so grateful that I found it and that I went down it because there was a lot of people who didn't want me to do MMA. Mm. Um, family, I, was that family members? And family, my judo coaches, okay. you know, really all of my close people did not want me. They were just like, you've done enough, you're good. Like Rhonda had, was a former teammate of mine. They yeah. just didn't really, want me to go down that path. They felt like, you know, I needed to retire. Um, but it all worked out how it was meant to work out. I can't, I can't even imagine if I hadn't done MMA now. Like that, that would make me so sad. I said to you just before we started recording, the first time I ever spoken to you was in London 2012. Yeah. When you picked up your first uh, yeah. gold medal. I didn't know your full story mm -hmm. to getting to that point. Yeah. So if you go back a few years previous to that. Yeah. What would this version of oh Kayla Harrison my say gosh. to that version of Kayla Harrison? Girl, it just keeps getting better. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think about that a lot, you know. Um, because there were points in your childhood where you actually yeah, thought of walking away from all sports. Absolutely. There were points. There were points in my when I was a teenager where I was I wanted to die. I didn't want to be on this earth anymore. Um, and I don't take that, I don't take this for granted. You know, I look back at my life and I was hopeless and helpless and um, did not see, couldn't see a path out of it. Like to be here now, mm. my life, and I'm not talking about fighting, I'm talking about my life. Yeah. I'm talking about I have two beautiful, healthy children. Um, I have a, a beautiful home, a, a place for them to grow and thrive and be safe in. I have amazing friends. Um, I've, I 
have a support group and uh, a team and like people who love me for me, if I never fought again, they would still be in my life. Yeah. Um, and I get to wake up every day and I get to chase my dreams and I get to do it and I'm financially blessed and I don't have to worry about where, I, how, if I should fill up my car this week or if I should, you know, eat like this week. Like I don't have to worry about that anymore. And so for me to look back on where I was and, and to see where I am now, not only am I safe, am I happy, am I healthy, am I thriving, but I'm, I'm passing that on. I'm breaking the cycle for my family. That is obviously enabled you to bless your life beyond fighting. Mm -hmm. I'm talking, you just mentioned your children. Yeah. And the story of how they come mm -hmm. into your life, that's, that's a big thing. That's a, that's a big thing to take on for, yeah. for, for any adult. How has that ch <laughs> changed you? Um, well, first of all, parenthood is like the roughest hood <laughs> in, in yeah. the world. Uh, I, I should say being a good parent is yeah. really hard. It's the hardest job in the world. Like training for the Olympics, training for a fight, pff, piece of cake compared to being a parent. I feel like they're saving me as much as I'm saving them. You know, way of like at they it. just, they bring a, before my life was great, you know, I had a good life, I was fighting, you know, I'd wake up, train, eat, go lay out, like maybe take my dogs for a walk, train, like eat again, train again, maybe have Taco Tuesdays with my friends or like, you know, poker night with the boys, like whatever. Uh, but it was very selfish, you know, very like centered around me, no, mm -hmm. nothing of s substance. And all of a sudden I have these two little kids dropped off at my door and they're the best thing that's ever happened to me. And um, yeah, life is good. How? I know that but it was scary, yeah. I'll yeah. tell you that. <laughs> no, okay, well, you wanna talk about like becoming a mom of, well, first of all, my mom had just had a stroke. Yeah. Her husband died. It's a it's COVID and yeah. Uh, how, yeah. Old was, how old was your daughter? She was six, is that Five right? Five and a half, six, yeah. And the little boy was? One. Wow. Yeah, and um, yeah, I flew home for the funeral and my mom is still was still recovering from her stroke at the time. Um, and I just told her, hey, listen, I think that I should take the kids for a little bit. Like she's also grieving, yes, obviously, like struggling. And she didn't really want me to take them. Nobody really wanted me to take them because my whole family still lives in Ohio. And I said, no, I think it'll be, yeah, I think it'll be okay. And I packed up a car, we put, we put some of their stuff and I drove, <laughs> I drove straight down to Florida with two kids in the car screaming. Um, and we were all crying. I think we all cried that road trip. And I knew, I knew that they were gonna stay with me. I think like in my heart, I knew but I was not prepared. Like no one can prepare you for, for being a mom. Mm. No one, there's nothing that anyone can say or do or, and no one knows either. Like everyone, everyone is just doing the best they can. Of like course. there are no answers. There's no rhyme or reason. Um, it was really hard. That first year was really, really, really hard. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie to you. Well, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, and it's, it's the best thing. And it's obviously helping you now with this next phase of, of mm -hmm. your own career. You know, honestly, like, I, I, I have my first loss. Yeah. Um, I, my daughter's in therapy, and so I come home, and my kids were at the fight. And I come home, and I take Kyla to therapy, and then afterwards, you know, she goes, and I'm like, hey, how's she doing? And she's, the Miss Laura's like, what do you mean? I'm like, did she say anything? Is she like... Is she okay? Mm -hmm. She's like, about what? And I'm like, the fight, because she was there, she saw me. And she was like, oh, she's, she said, oh yeah, you know, she, I asked her about the fight and she said, yeah, we got to go to New York and we got to eat pizza on Thanksgiving. And my mom had a fight, she lost, but then we all went out for ice cream and you know, she's home with us and every, and I was, she was like, Kayla, honey, she doesn't care if you mm -hmm. win or lose. She cares that you come home and that you're her mom. And like that, um, oh man, I'm gonna get emotional. That, that changed my life. I had never, um, it had never really occurred to me that someone would love me without me doing something for it, by just being, by just being her mom, you know? Um, 
And so that has changed my life. And that's what I mean when I say I think they're saving me just as much as I'm trying to save them. Again, it's beautiful. <laughs> the, the, the final thing on this weekend. Yeah. How much does this mean to you? You've achieved everything. Yeah. You've done everything. Yeah. What does this mean to you? This being is personal. Here this weekend? Yeah, this is personal. After my loss, I had to decide really what did I want? Who was I? And I had a year to think about that. I had a long layoff. And the reality is that fighting brings me joy. Like, forget all of this. Yes, this is fun, the lights, the camera, whatever. But like, to step inside a cage and to try and be my, the very best possible version of myself and the journey to get there, the, the training, the preparation, the discipline, like that brings me joy. I love it. I love the process and I love the challenge. How many conversations this week have you had about weight? <laughs> You see how I left it right to the end yeah, of the you conversation? Yeah, you did. Well I done. I my well, best. Yeah, it's good because then I'm in a good mood until the very end of the, of the but, interview. But knowing you as I do as, as the consummate professional that you are, yeah. I know that you will have made some significant yes. changes in order to, to hit yes. 136. So what Absolutely. are those changes? I mean, really, like, first of all, I brought in a team of professionals. You know, I have a chef, Dara, Platinum Plate, shout out. Uh, I have a weight cut specialist, nutritionist. The UFC has been instrumental and their whole PI, mm. the team, Charles Charles there has been super helpful working with my nutritionist, working with my weight cut specialist. Um, and I've just really kind of surrendered and trusted the process. Like, I don't know about cutting weight. So I have to find people who do and mm. trust them and, and be all in on their, their system and their program. And I have been, I've been very disciplined, I've been walking like walking biking or swimming six miles a day on top of my two training sessions on top of taking care of my two kids like i've been doing saunas and, and getting heat acclimated i've been drinking a ridiculous i have to pee so bad right now you wouldn't believe it um and we've been slowly bringing down the calories you know i've been disciplined yeah. and it's it's gonna show i don't think it's gonna be easy but it's gonna show and what version of Kayla Harrison do we get on Saturday night? The very best. The God, very best. I cannot wait to see it. <laughs> I've waited for this for a long time. I me too. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs>